what's going on guys welcome back to my channel today we're gonna take a look at the IDF Tech F90 professional edition also known as the octopus I guess with the ball on top it sort of resembles an octopus plus it's supposedly waterproof which goes along with the sea creature theme on another note this is the first time I've heard of IDF Tech maybe it's a branch off of IdeaFly you can see here they both use the same lettering plus both names are stamped on the instructions either way the IDF Tech F90 and IdeaFly F90 are both identical both are 90 millimeter brushless micros that arrive fully assembled containing all the ingredients that should make up an excellent little flyer this review will be going over what's all included which should be pretty short as there's really not much to it then we'll take a closer look at the F90's hardware from there I'll show you my setup procedure as I run through Betaflight along with a quick tune and lastly follow that up with some line of sight and FPV footage. So one of the things that really caught my eye when I first found out about this quad was this video showing the F90 completely submerged and then flying out from underneath the water. I'm going to do the exact same test to see whether or not the F90 is as waterproof as it's shown. Although I am a bit worried because one of the warnings actually says do not throw in water. But I'm definitely curious to see what's going to happen. I just hope everything goes according to plan and nothing shorts. Alright let's get started and see what's inside this box. Instructions. These are GemFan 2035s and prop screws. You get two full GemFan sets, but only one set of screws. Balance charger. Alright, let's take a closer look at the F90. Let's start out with the motors, which are 1104 8500 kV brushless motors. Pretty much your typical size when it comes to quadcopters ranging from 85 up to 100 millimeters. As far as the KV goes, it's pretty high, which in a nutshell spells out for a higher thrust at higher speeds. The motors are perfectly paired with GemFan 2035 props. I was very happy with the power throughout my testing. There wasn't a moment where I felt it was lacking power. With the way the quad is designed, it may even be able to fit a larger prop. I mean, it, it might fit. I I mean, it looks like it would, but don't take my word for it. Only try it if you have some on hand. Anyways, you get two sets of the gem fans. The extra set come with a set of screws, while the ones pre-installed don't. The thing with these props is they have a very tight fit. So you can go with or without the prop screws. I've been flying the F90 without using any screws and I haven't had a prop fly off yet, which is always a good thing. The F90 is powered by a 2 cell 400 milliamp LiPo that's rated at 30C. I'm not a fan of this battery holster that it uses since it basically forces you to use only this size battery. These are the dimensions on the stock pack. You probably have 1 to 2 millimeter tolerance when it comes to the battery size. Since the plastic holster does give a bit, you should be able to squeeze the battery in place. As far as the batteries go, I would recommend getting something with at least 60C discharge. Not only does this mitigate brownouts, but there is a noticeable increase in performance. Here's an example of what happens when you have a low C battery. It flies fine at low throttle, but once you get on it, the video will start to cut out like this and if you keep going it will probably sag to the point of brownout. The total weight of the F90, this includes the propellers and battery, is just a smidge over 86 grams. Next we have a unique frame. Actually it's the frame, the flight controller and FR Sky receiver all in one. The specs call the, fr the frame carbon fiber but from looking at it I don't think it is. Pretty sure the frame is PCB I mean how else would the flight controller and receiver be built into it? With the waterproof coating, the frame measures 1.7 millimeters thick, which is definitely on the thinner side, and it does worry me a bit in the durability department. But we'll see how things go. Who knows, maybe the waterproof coating makes the frame stronger? 
The coating has a sort of rubbery feel to it and it's spread all over the frame. The hardware under the canopy also has this coating pretty much all over. The flight controller is an F3. I believe it's an omnibus. Well, that's what showed up when I checked in the CLI, which also showed it to be 317. It's probably a good idea to downgrade to 316 or upgrade to 3.2 if you want to avoid the issues that plague 317. Other than that, it's a good flight controller. It's got a built-in OSD where you can edit the layout directly through Betaflight, which makes it super convenient. Plus, it's a fast F3 with 8K gyro update, which pretty much means less errors and therefore smoother flights. Access to the micro USB port is a little bit tight, so you're going to have to push the prop guards out of the way to connect to the board. Built into the frame is an FR Sky receiver. Unfortunately, it only supports PPM, giving you a max of 8 channels. For me, that's more than enough, as I normally only use 6 channels. I'm definitely thankful that they put the bind button and the boot button on the bottom of the quad. It just gives you easy access for you when, for when you need a bind or for when you need to update the firmware. Underneath the canopy lies a 4-in-1 12 amp ESC. They are BL Heli S and will allow you to run anything from one shot all the way up to D shot 600. I tried running the flight controller and ESC both at 8K, but this resulted in the CPU load shooting all the way up to to 100%. 8K 4K was the magic number, leaving the CPU load just below 20%. Next on top we have this ball looking thing. It's a plastic enclosure for the camera and VTX combo. A 5.8 GHz 40 channel 25 milliwatt VTX is paired up with a 600 TVL CMOS camera. The camera angle is very mild and it sits in a fixed position. I only found it as an issue when I was flying close to the ground. This is like 5 feet and under. Finally, let's head to the park for some F90 flying. Sorry guys, my camera mic cuts out here. Let's see how much power we're looking at. And what better way than to do a punch out. Wow, this thing's got plenty of power. You kinda don't expect it coming from the F90 because it looks so toyish. The F90 is definitely no slouch in the power department. Since I downgraded to firmware 316 pretty much right off the bat, I forgot to save the F90's stock tune, so I can't really say how that feels. But the stock beta flight tune, it flew great, although flips and rolls did feel a little bit sluggish. So to fix that, I just bumped a few numbers up. There are four LEDs on the bottom of this quad, and they're supposed to help with orientation, but with the quad being so small and moving so fast, it's hard to see them. It could also be that it's just too bright outside. The damage resulted in some bent props and also two arms. They were easy to bend back straight so it's definitely not carbon. Alright let's get into some FPV action. First off the OSD layout is completely different than stock. I removed a few things like artificial horizon, I don't really have a need for that, and added a few things like the current meter and throttle percentage. These were all super easy to edit through Betaflight, it's a million times easier than messing with MWOSD, I can tell you that much. For the most part the video quality was very good, unless I was flying behind a bunch of trees or a bunch of leaves, the VTX system worked really good. The quad is easy to control. I think it's really well balanced and very stable, which made flipping through the tree gap really easy. So I didn't really get to test the quad out with other batteries, since it uses that stupid plastic mount, which by the way broke, and so did the prop guards. I think they used some type of cheap plastic for those parts. But the battery itself performed good. The quad was plenty powerful and I didn't have any brownouts. The only thing is if you look at the voltage on the OSD, you can see that it'll drop down to as low as 4.15 volts. Definitely not healthy for the battery. Alright, I'm going to let this clip play out, but stay tuned because at the end of this video, I'll be throwing the F90 into some water to test out just how waterproof it really is.
something. Thank <laughs> you.